Welcome to Uniquely Brilliant, a podcast for creative, quirky, and extraordinary thinkers of all ages and the people who love them. We encourage, inspire, and provide strategies to motivate you to embrace your unique brilliance and realize your potential for success. Hi, I'm Diana Bader, also known as Coach Di. I encourage teens and young adults to become who they are and develop personal success through self-awareness and positivity. You can find me at freshcanvascoaching.com, follow and like the Fresh Canvas Facebook page, or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Die. Hello there, I'm Becky Berry. I am a performance coach who helps people level up their lives by smoothing out the relationship between their work lives and their personal lives. You can find my website at beckyberrycoach.com. I'm on Twitter at Becky Berry Coach, and you can find me on my Facebook page, Becky Berry Coach. Together, we are here sharing our thoughts, insights, and experiences from our own uniquely brilliant perspective. All right, it's episode 107, and today we're talking about past as prologue. Yep. Yep, it's a it's a Shakespeare quote, which I'm going to like read to you right now because we read it and we were like totally blown away. I was thinking it was somebody like Proust or, you know, some French guy, but um, it wasn't. It was our own, you know, we call him Willie B. We used to call him Willie B in high school um, because we're in Atlanta and Willie B was at the zoo. Just saying. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, right. <laughs> so here's where it comes from. This is from The Tempest. We all were sea swallowed, though some cast again. And by that destiny to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue, what to come in yours and my discharge. We didn't realize that that was the context around this quote. So when we looked it up this morning, who said this? What's the attribution? And and we read this 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 verse from, from the play. We're like, what the what? This is so perfect. Because we'd already talked about doing talking about the past and talking about calendars again and time, more time than calendars. Yeah, because this one's coming out right at the beginning of the year. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, people are making their resolutions. and But you also, you know, some people can leave some of 2017 behind, but, you know, you always bring some of it forward and you can't really move forward hanging on to the past. The past. Well, it depends on how you're hanging on to it, right? Yeah. Because we, um, I think, I think that's great, and, you know. You have that quote. Did you read it? Oh. You want to read that? So this is a quote from our favorite source, though. I'm sorry. They're Shakespeare, and then they're Hallmark Channel movies, because we are women. In case you wondered, you know we're quirky, but we both watch Hallmark Channel movies. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where I got this from. But Particularly uh, at Christmas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I need fluff in my head. Right? Um, yeah, it, it said, uh, before you grab onto the future, make sure you let go of the past. And that just struck me. I, don't, I, I can't even tell you what the movie was about. I mean, I know they have a little formula that you right. could probably yeah, follow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that just, the wording just struck me. Because there's, well, I mean, I'm in such a, a place of transition right now anyway. Right. And some of the past is like holding on to me like thistles. Thistles. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not the image I had in my head. I had like <laughs> zombies hanging on to you. Oh. Well, that's probably more Trying accurate. to chew on your brain and stuff. That's, that was my picture of that thing that's <laughs> okay. hanging on to you from your past. That's Just in case you're more, wondering. That's probably more accurate. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a little giddy today. Oh, I'm going to need. Uh-huh. Right. Well, you know, we, which it's really interesting because we had our meetup last night, next chapter. And it's it's interesting to see who's kind of evolved from their past and who's trying to reinvent themselves okay Mm -hmm. this is a you might think that's like a some people might think that's like that's nitpicking but it's not to me when you say reinvention and we did i think we did a podcast on this the definition is letting go of what was there and doing something totally new well no just no well it's like a racing evolve it it's like we don't need to erase our past Mm -hmm. because it's it's how we got here Mm mm-hmm how we deal with it is how we go forward. And that's that letting go of it or working with it until it's, you know, it's until it's like um, incorporated, you know, into your life as opposed to something that's sticking out like a hangnail and bothering you to death that you want to chew. Oh, that's perfect. You know, a hangnail like you want to chew on it all the time to get rid of it. It doesn't work. 
no. Well, and, and I'm a great example of that because my past is coming full circle and mm -hmm. I'm going back to it mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And mm -hmm. it's really fascinating to me how many things and many people and things are coming out of the woodwork and to support you to yeah mostly to support me and just like overwhelmingly i would bet to support you yeah just a few stragglers well and and just the the emotions behind it that are very overwhelming as well yeah because i i keep explaining to people that you know when i go when i would go back to columbus when i was growing up where i grew up um when I go back in the over the last 25, 30 years, it wasn't on my agenda. So I was like there as a tourist and had tour guides. So like had, returning to live there wasn't on your agenda. It, well, it wasn't on my agenda, but I didn't get to see what I wanted to see. I didn't get to do what I wanted a, to yeah. do. So I only got like a little tiny snapshot of that world. Mm -hmm. And in the last, I don't know, six months, eight months, when I've been able to go back up there, when I was taking my son back up there, to college, I, yeah. Yeah, I got to explore a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it was weird because I could see, I was back in places that I haven't been since I was 18, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was doing things. And so it was kind of like waking up from a coma. And people expect you, because you're from there, to know stuff and know where things are. And like, there's this mall that I think has been there probably for, well, at least 25 years that I've never been to. What's that? Didn't you tell me about that one? Is that the one you were telling me about? I, I don't know, because I've never yeah. been there. Uh -huh. I've, I've still never been there. Yeah. But it's like the mall that people go yeah. to yeah, and are doing some that. of their yeah, Christmas yeah. shopping. And well, there's a couple other ones that are even newer that uh -huh. I have been to. Mm -hmm. But they just, oh yeah, and they'll just refer to it. I'm like, oh, Is this no. the one that's in downtown Columbus? No, 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 no. Okay, no, so this is a different one. No, this is something else. But I've never been there. Yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea where exactly it is. I yeah. mean, I've got a general reference, but... Yeah. I remember when Susie moved back here from Nashville, my sister, she had the same thing. You know, we were... You know, I never left. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Becky, I've been gone for 20 years or however long that was at the time. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is that is interesting. Mm -hmm. That is. So there's that... There's that you're far past. But what really got us going on this this topic was we were talking about calendars, which, as you know, is a hot topic for us. I hate them. Diana kind of has a, her own relationship with them, which is a little healthier than mine. Um, <laughs> about that. Well, it is because, you know, well, you, you make it work for you, and I'm still struggling to figure out. Listen, oh, yeah. this is what I visualize now. In my four minutes of visualization in the morning, yeah, I visualize working a daggum calendar because my word for next year is steady, and I know there's no steady unless I write it down. And, and have some kind of accountability. So I'm just saying. I think the only reason I have a decent relationship with a calendar is because it's a visual tool. Well, you also bend it to your will. Well, yeah. I bend everything to my <laughs> well, will. Well, yeah. Like, what else would I do? <laughs> right? What else would you do? But you have to, you would ha see that visual thing. The thing is knowing how to deploy the things that work for you. You know? Mm -hmm. But you figured it out because, you know, I think it's that fluid thing. For all my understanding about the past and the future and whatever, I don't think my view of time is as fluid as yours is. So that when you you see that calendar is a fluid thing, and I think I'm still mired down in so much in that it's like a prison. Mm. Right. Oh, because you, you see know, the grid. Right. <laughs> the prison as opposed to a platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I, I th think that's how I do everything is, is in a very fluid fashion. And so this whole thing about the future and letting go of the past, I don't think you have to let go of all of the past and with the calendar as well. I think, you know, some of it you bring forward with you because it's part of that evolution that we talk right, about. Right, right. And so, but you get to let go of some of it. So one of my favorite things to do with the calendar is to like X the day off. Well, we get to choose, or right? Did we do it? Turn episode? the page, whatever. We did an episode of Take mm -hmm. What You Like. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've, yeah, we talk about that a lot. Yeah, exactly. And I printed out all the episodes and left it upstairs. Go mm -hmm. figure. Um, yeah, because I, I forget that. The other thing, I think that I think that's really good. What struck me was your description of what you're doing with your calendar. You need to tell everybody how you've got your calendar and where it starts and where it ends. And then, 
Yeah, like, well, we've talked about talk this us. before yeah, a few yeah. episodes back on the calendar thing. It's just uh, the traditional January to December calendar wasn't working for me because things that are happening in my world do not end in December. They end in June mm-hmm. of 2018. And so I started a calendar from September to June. So I can see that's the important chunk of time I need to see. Not coincidentally, the school year. Well, no, not coincidentally at all. Right? Yeah, well, because, because I have kids. A, well, I have, a, kids. I have a son graduating. Right. And that's going to lead to a whole other chapter of my life, mm-hmm. which I can't predict. But I need to get that space and time under control and have some sort of idea of what's happening when yep. so I can move in. So I have to sort of um, like chunk this mm-hmm. so it can become the past. So I can move to the future. So it can be prologue. Mm -hmm. So it can be prologue. Yes. See, so we can, we can structure our prologue. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are always going to be blips along the way, but we can, you've had a big one, but you, we can structure our prologue too. Yeah. But by doing that. So, yeah. So then here comes the cool part. I mean, all that's cool. But to me, the coolest part is what you just said about what you're going to do on January 1st. Oh, on January 1st? Oh, yeah. Well, the the months from... Yeah, this is the other thing I have to do to visualize, too, Uh though, is I have to get rid of parts that are already gone. So I've, you know, X'd off the the months, the prior months, the 2017 months, and so they're coming off the calendar. And the way I had it structured on the calendar that I built, I can do that. So let's see, I guess it's been December, November, and October. So I guess I started this in October. They're coming off. I'm guy. They're set up on this thing, so I can just cut them off and then just focus now on January, February, March, April, and May. I just love it. Yeah, I just love it. I just but, cut it off. Boom, <laughs> boom. So that I don't even have a visual that ties me to the past. Mm-hmm. But that past set up the future. That's actually set up now. Yeah, that set up the present. Right, because we're always talking about staying in the now. I did the grounding thing last night with a couple of people. So, you know, you want to stay in the now and, and that, that lets you do it. And I set it, I set it up that way on purpose because I had another wall calendar uh-huh. and the way that it was structured. That, that perpetual one? Um, that, this one? That had yeah, all yeah, yeah. Here. I couldn't cut it off yeah. once I got rid of some of the months. You know, oh. it, the one thing I like about. Because like, it was like a continuous 365 day calendar. You could start wherever you wanted but, to. Well, what I ended up doing was like folding it like origami practically to like eliminate and not see stuff. It was great. There's this thing called Instagram where you can share photos of amazing things like that that other people could benefit from. Like this person sitting next to you. I, I that never, is amazing. And I can just totally picture you doing it, but I want to see it. I never think of the stuff that I do as all that amazing and share worthy. Well, that, if, if it doesn't feel amazing and share worthy to you, that means you're in your zone. Yeah. Okay, I mean, how many times have we said that to our clients? If you're doing something, you're like, oh, this is no big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> That's the hallmark of a big deal. That's it doesn't true. feel like you're doing anything. Mm-hmm. You know, people are like, oh, you're so great on a podcast. It must be hard work. I'm like, what? What? I could talk. Excuse me. I could talk all day. Well, I was, at, that's really funny because I was ta- uh, messaging a friend of mine from the past that <laughs> not, not long ago and telling him about the podcast that, that we we're doing. And he's like, oh, that's cool. You can do that anywhere. I said, well, currently we're doing it in my friend's basement. Right. But that's true. We can. Well, we all, we will. I mean, when you go to mm. Columbus, we're not going anywhere. No, we'll just be doing it remote, which will be weird. But yeah, okay, we'll we'll come up. Just with give me way. one more thing to adjust to. Thanks. I think it'll be exciting. I think it'll be different. I think it'll be really different. Mm-hmm. I but think so but too. we'll have two and a half years under our belt, which is a, a cool thing to go forward. Now I have another reason to come to Columbus. So to so Ohio. So that idea of I like to call it bending the calendar to your will. <laughs> Because that's important for me. Yeah. So you've done that mm-hmm. by, by setting up this calendar that goes September to June. And now that when December 31st rolls around, you can cut off that part. Yep. So that you're not like dragging the past that you don't want to have with you. Um, that, because there were things I would assume you just assume like flush. But it set you up. Yes. It set you up. This is not about New Year's resolutions. Although it could be. Mm-hmm. Although it could be. So that just really appeals to me. Like I'm trying to visualize how this works for me. And you know what I just flashed on? What? Is you know I have that 
planner. It's not gigantic. It's not a huge gigantic thing. I have had those. Mm-hmm. Um, but it ha- it started in August. It goes to December. It's a month and it's it's the weeks behind it. And and I just visualized on having one for every month, but that doesn't work for me because then I got I can't see the whole year and I have to have it with me. Yes. It's not like I can do it on the wall. I have to carry it with me in a big format. Because somebody said, well, just take a picture of it. I'm like, this brain takes a lot of input <laughs> to <laughs> to really comprehend what's going on. And that's it's just one of those things I keep wrestling with. But I, but I, I just want, again, all the struggling in the past brought me to an email I opened yesterday. Because I sent it to you as soon as I got it. Where one of the people that Diana and I have listened to his podcast, I think Diana's you've done met, stuff with him. Yeah, you've met, met, met yeah. him. It's Michael Hyatt, has these new calendars. And we've done two episodes on calendars, kind of, because we've done the calendar one and we did one on the 12 week year. I don't remember what we called that one. Um, I will let you write that down. Mm-hmm. I will look that up and put it in the notes on YouTube because that's where we have the best notes. Um, so he has a new calendar. That's 12 weeks. And I just went nuts. Because 12 months is really, I mean, 12 months is too much for me. Six months, woo, just is, is a lot. But I think, you know, I'd, I've done, I'll call it one and a half cycles of the 12-week year where you where you just plan in 12 weeks. It's not like a sprint, like in, in a, a development cycle or a work cycle. It's the year begins on this day and it ends on this day. Here are my goals. Here's how I'm going to do them. And he's like, put it all right there in the book. So so the question is, mm-hmm. if I get it, which I'm buying it. When I buy it, excuse me, I'm not saying if. When, because I'm going to buy it. You can buy one at a time. Will it intimidate me? Or will having all that organized for me instead of me having to organize it make it easier for me to use? Plus, it's only three months instead of 12. So, I mean, I was, I was so like, whoa. I went, wait. When I, when I read, they didn't have pictures, and I had to poke around to find the, the pictures of, of how the time is organized. And I went, oh, man, I like made all that stuff myself. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't keep up with it because it was like in that folder and this folder, you know, and it, it wasn't yeah. there. So I don't know. I, I want to try and like harness the knowledge I have of, of how I've worked with calendars before, you know, for going forward and not just buy one more organizer that doesn't work. Well, that doesn't work for me. Well, you know, one of the things as you're talking, and I'm thinking, like like I keep saying, I'm going to be going, and I have been going through lots of transition. Hello. It's going, I've been watching. <laughs> I know. And I know it's not going to stop anytime soon. I'm not going to get to a, okay, you're here place. Yeah. But my favorite th- thought about, you know, transitioning and all this kind of stuff is seasons. And a season is... That's one of his things. Michael Hyatt talks about seasons all the time. Yeah. And so looking at each three months or whatever as a season, Mm -hmm. and what does this season look like just like outside? You know, is this one that's going to be kind of bleak or is this one that's going to be, you know, flourishing or is this one, you know, that's full of color or one where I can sit back and bask? I don't like the the season analogy does not work with me. Well, I just, I don't know. When you're saying it, I'm like, because again, I'm linear. Yeah, I mean, for all my not being linear, I'm a linear. Is so there's only one fallow season. There's only one bursting season. There's only you know I'm like no, but you know that's mm-hmm. that's my boom 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 boom. And I gotta say, I don't think I was born linear. I think being born at the time when I was born, mm-hmm. I became linear because that was how you moved through life, right? You did this. You didn't ask questions. You, but, but yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm older than you. Yeah. And it's, you know, not a huge amount, but I think it's a significant from, because I was born in 1957, you know, and so everything was rote and you memorized and, and, you know, good girls did good work and they behaved and they did all this. Well, none of that's me. I mean, the good work part is, but behaving, that's not me. No. But it was. But it was. Because it's what you did to get ahead, to, to get what you wanted. And you, you squashed every, every creative thought. People, you know, would think I was weird. Not my group, but the world in general would roll their eyes. I guess they still do. Um, and go, oh, can't you just settle down and figure something out? But no, I mean, that's my genius. So why are you still hanging on to it? I don't know. I mean, that's that, that's what I'm fighting, right? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm fighting all the time, right? 
so when I say something out loud, sorry you guys that I had to work this out on your on your time, but no. you know once I said it out loud, I could just see it that it's that whole that whole and I got tears in my eyes, so you know it's the truth. Not like I'm crying, but that's my truth mechanism. Um, that's my superpower. But but it's more pliable than I let it be. Although every morning, what do I say? Keep my eyes, ears, heart, and mind open to what's out there for me today. I don't say on my calendar. I don't say on this date in history. I just say whatever's out there, trying to open and pry that back open. Well, and honestly, a traditional calendar is very linear. Right. And so you've got this push-pull with it. Yeah. (laughs) Which would be why I picked the word steady. Like, I got challenged on it by Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Stephanie goes, Becky. I'm like, okay. I hear what you're saying because it's supposed to lift you up and da da. But I believe that maybe there's sometimes where you need a word that's going to ground you. That's going to be, this is this is just such a key thing that I need to acquire. I don't have to be like, I never think of slow and steady as the tortoise. I think of the hare. I mean, he goes too fast, but you can still go fast and get stuff done as long as you do that stuff fast steadily. You know, you just keep doing it. You just keep doing it. That's more I'm, consistently. Right? Right. But I like steady. I like steady. Because I haven't felt well, steady. It... I haven't felt steady in a while. Yeah, I can see that. Right? Well, and I same, think... Yeah, we know you're going for the same thing. So going back home. Yeah, yeah. Get your feet back on your well, in a different way. Yeah. I mean, I've been... Yeah. Well, for me, it's a, it's more of a grounding thing. It's more of... Uh, it's, as we talked about on the one episode, it's a place for me to land. Right. And But I, I'm not hung up on the idea that I have to stay landed. Right. So. It's your perch. Yeah. I just need a place to land. Mm-hmm. and Where you're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Where, you're, where it's your place to land, which is not what you feel when you're here. No. In Atlanta. No. And you never have. No. I mean, I think I probably did early on, but it, because I was exploring it and everything mm-hmm. else. But I've never been the kind of person I've, that, you know, I've never dreamt of the the whole steady and everything was the same kind Ew, of gross that, not me either and that that would never work for me so but i think that's my a, calendar challenge yeah and but i think that's the traditional that linear view mm-hmm. is that you, you know you have life goes this way mm-hmm. whatever way that is mm-hmm. and whatever way you were brought up in so yeah, except it, i wasn't brought up that way well, everything around me was like that. that. It doesn't yeah. mean you're general. Yeah. I'm, I'm that was that whole media it. thing, right? And I didn't need social media. I got that just from media, media. Yeah. And and it the, looks like this. It talks like this. It walks like this. It's, yeah. And then I married the man who blew all that up. So there you go. Well, <laughs> there's past your his prologue. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get back. Yeah, I think that's I think that's an important thing, because we're both talking about, and we've talked more than once about how our past. Is is an integral part of how we move through our world today in a good way. Oh yes, in a really good way. I mean, for all my talking about, you know, structure and you know, growing up in the fifties and sixties, I also grew up during the Vietnam War, when everything was questioned. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I'm hearing a lot of because I said so, but I'm watching the news and I'm you know I'm seeing these things and I'm reading Life and Life magazine and I'm reading, and I'm like what then, you know, so there's that, that tension is always there for me because I'm not, I'm, I'm not really that linear. I can be linear. I can manage projects. I can, I can accomplish big, huge things for, for, for all kinds of people, but I'm just trying to move. Well, John, my friend, John, remember the business plan book he gave me where nothing in the business plan was a line. He goes, I'm an artist. I can't have a linear business plan. Uh And I have ignored that. So I really need to, and you know, I write on unlined paper. So it's just, it's just kind of funny, but that's all that it's prologue because I'm choosing to use it to go forward. I'm casting again. Mm-hmm. And that quote, that's what got me. That's the reason you guys got to hear the whole quote from the Tempest because people only usually quote like this little tiny piece, but they cast again. They were like whipped down by the waves and some of us cast again. Well, I cast again. You cast again. Mm-hmm. Over and over and over again. That's our resiliency. Right. Yeah. Well, because it's our past, and we know that we can do that. Yes. And and I think yeah. we spend a lot of time, and I think we a lot of what we cover here is that same thing. Just cast again. Try it again. 
tried it. It's not over. It's not over. Past is prologue. It's not the end. Mm-hmm. It's not even the beginning. It's the middle. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see that. Yeah, I keep thinking that even though we were we had different ideas in how we were raised, there was there was steadiness back then. Mm-hmm. And that may be what you're you're craving was that 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 my growing up was just like my life right now. When my when I was fourteen years old and my youngest brother was, was born, my mm-hmm. dad quit his job, mm-hmm. his very well paying job, and started selling life insurance. I think that year he made eleven thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Which was not much even in nineteen seventy one. So maybe I kind of crave that steadiness, and I've never had it. Never. Yeah. Never. So I don't know. I don't, it's just something to work on. It's just, that's not it, even, I'm not even working on it. I don't care that much about it. It's just it'll be, when it it'll holds be fun to me explore, back. explore, actually. Right? When it, that, I read, the reason my word is steady is I read an opinion piece by Dan Rather the day after the election in Alabama, and he said, be steady, folks. Be steady. And I went, that's it. That's it. It's not about um, not being off balance, mm-hmm. but maintaining some forward momentum. Just like we talk mm-hmm. about, take the next step. Take the next step. That's what kind of steady, my steady for this, the, the, my word this year is. Yep. Does that make sense? It does. It makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I just can't even tell you. I'm just reading that. It's like in the the fourth line in the in the piece. And I went, there it is. Okay done and every time I I try to now I'm much better till yesterday every time I tried to say the word steady settle came out of my brain interesting like steady is settling for something so yeah there's no actually I don't think it's steady is settling for you I I think it's it's settling yourself down oh girl steady oh girl excuse me time out you talk because I'm writing this down (laughs) because this is profound and huge and I'm gonna be working on this today (laughs) absolutely no and and for me, you know, my word this year is wonder. We've talked about that in the last episode. But for me, when I was growing up, I, I and this fluidity that I have, mm-hmm. I was given that kind of freedom. Yeah, I had because I had such an internal steadiness. Yeah, that if I was free form outside, if I was doing something crazy, you know, I was allowed to do that because yeah. everybody knew that it wasn't going to go off and far and beyond right well and plus you didn't grow up in isolation i did i I always forget this piece oh i grew up on a farm oh yeah my nearest neighbor was four or five miles away you're not walking five miles not even that right and you look you were in a neighborhood i I don't even know to this day 34 years in my neighborhood i don't know how to function in a neighborhood well it's funny because i tried to function i know right because it it, yeah it wasn't it because it wasn't the same kind of steadiness as i was used to and really on mm-hmm. my street um, that I grew up on, there are still several of the people that I grew up with still living there. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I like that internal steadiness, let you go out and do things. Because as you were saying that, I'm thinking that the internal steadiness that I do have, you know, my, my absolute grounding that, you know, I'm firm on my feet, that, that's not what I'm talking about in here. That comes from my past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That comes from all those people who liked me just like I was. Yep. Thank you, Bridget Jones Diary. Um and those people that are still in my life, you know, because I still have so many people in my life from when I was younger. Plus, I have all these new people who are in my life that, although I might feel unsteady, that I might feel like those waves are crashing over me. I just cast again. Let's go. You know what? You're not feeling unsteady. You're feeling unsettled. And unsettled. that's what you need the setting steady for. Oh, God, you're right. Because that for the word. last five Five Six, years. Yeah, yeah. Your life has been completely unsettled. Yep. And and so the steadiness is, um, you know, you're right in your sails, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to, 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 for a smoother cruise. I love it. I think that's, I think that's really, that's really true. So, yeah, because, because the, this, these past five years have been, would you say like discreet, like a discreet part of my, like nothing like, nothing like this has ever happened before mm-hmm. to me. So, of course, I mean, you know, your sp- <laughs> hopefully your spouse only dies once. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that's really, well, thanks for letting me work this out today in this 30-minute uh, <laughs> session, everybody. But, but I'm just, you know, it's just, it's so elegant. But I, I think, I think this word steady is helping you with this unsettledness so you can grab onto the future. Right. 
And that's the same thing with my sense of wonder. I've sort of lost that childlike mm-hmm. thing that I've, and it's been missing for several years now. Mm-hmm. And so being able to approach the future with a sense of wonder instead of expectation mm-hmm. is allowing me to move forward. Wonder versus expectation. You can expect that on a podcast episode soon. I love that. Girl, <whistles> two profound women. We may be quirky birds, but we're pretty profound sometimes. Welcome to our therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. Uh, brought to you by William Shakespeare. So I'm going to read this. Okay. I'm going to leave you with this before we go to our um, stamp of brilliance uh, to figure that out. You know, you get your, like, nanosecond of music. So we all were sea swallowed, though some cast again, and by that destiny to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue, what to come in yours and my discharge. I just love it. I just love it. All right. We will be right back. All righty. The stamp of brilliance today is the past is the beginning of your now. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Your past is the beginning of your now. Wow. Excellent. Yeah, we do good work. I'm not modest either. (laughs) All right. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with a friend. Also take a minute to rate it and leave a review on iTunes. Check out our website at uniquelybrilliant.me and sign up to have the podcast delivered directly to your inbox. Shoot any thoughts, comments, and suggestions to talk the number two us at uniquelybrilliant.me. You can also reach out to us on our Facebook page and don't forget to like us. And now you can find us on YouTube with some awesome notes. Yep, that's where our fabulous notes are. 